Hello, my fellow investors, and welcome back to another view requested fundamental analysis video. We got two more companies after this video, there will only be one. Guys, Friday, actually, no, technically tomorrow, Wednesday, well, when you guys see this, tomorrow we are going to live stream for CPI. CPI does come out for the month of June tomorrow, and we are going to live stream it at around like 6.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, right? So that's going to happen tomorrow. Also, also, on Friday, we are officially going to start earnings week. So, unfortunately, I'm going to try to get through as many of these, the ones for June as well as the ones for July this week. But, after the Friday, guys, we're pretty much just going to stop it right there because, well, again, I kind of want to cover earnings. Really, really important, especially after the whole Q2 nonsense. So, that's what we're going to do this week. And, um, yeah, I just wanted to give you guys a heads up on that. Now, with all of that said, whew, all right, let's spin this wheel and see what company we should analyze today using a fundamental perspective as well as discounted free cash flow. And we got the company BKE. This is actually not the first time I've done this company. I looked at the ticker and I'm just like... I think I've seen that th this one before. Guys, this is the company Buckle, all right? So I've done this one before one other time here on the channel. I think it'll be very, very interesting. Now, this one was brought up by... Oh, man. Uh, Nehem Nehemiah Barrett. Nehemiah Barrett. Tell me if I said that correctly. Nehemiah Barrett. And uh, let's see if this company, guys, I don't remember what I said last time, but let's see if this company is worth the current price it is right now. They're using, of course, this kind of free cash flow. And let's take a look at the fundamentals. So with that said, let's get started with this analysis. So here we have the company website for Buckle. And I gotta say, I, I don't really quite remember what they do. I think they did like a lot of apparel stuff, right? For some reason, I, I keep thinking... I keep thinking belt buckles, but it, obviously that's not it. So yeah, let's take a look at what this company actually does, guys. In their company profile, we can see the Buckle Inc. operates as a retailer as casual apparel. There it is. Footwear, accessories for young men and women in the United States. It markets a selection of brands named casual apparel, including denims, other casual bottoms, tops, sportswear, otherwear, uh, accessories, footwear, as well as a private label mer merchandise, primarily compromising a BKE buckle. Okay, great. So that's pretty much it. We got it from the first sentence, right? They make apparel products and it's mainly targeted for young men and women here in the United States. Now, that's interesting because, well, this is a consumer discretionary and man, when things get rough, consumer discretion gets hit hard, right? Gets it tremendously hard because, well, you know, People may not want to buy, or people may not have the ability to buy a brand new, you know, a brand new pair of sneakers, right? Or whatever. People will prioritize uh, consumer staples. So just keep that in mind. Now, let's come over into their earnings. Because they did have earnings on May 26th. EPS normalized actual 86 cents, missed by 6 cents. EPS gap actual 86 cents. That was a miss by 6 cents. Again, revenue of $282.83 million dollars which is a miss by $14.5 million. So it was a miss on all of them. And when it comes to the revisions, guys, there really isn't much of anything here. We got one revision in the past 90 days, one revision to the downside, that's it. So this is a company that isn't in anybody's radar. Now that could actually be a really good thing because if they actually end up doing a lot better, right? That means that when they do actually do a lot better, well, that will probably get on people's radar, but if you see the uh, the possibility of that happening now, while they're not on the radar, then that might give you a tremendous upside. Now, with that said, let's jump into the calculator. We got the ticker with BKE, market cap of $1.78 billion. Look at that PE, look at that, it's really tiny PE. I'm already liking this, 7.24, current share price of $35.27. Taking a look at this graph, we can see that on the one year, they're up 34.54%. Year to date, guys, they're down 17.76. Look at this again on the year to date. Look at that massive, I mean, what, they're, actually, yeah, their 52-week high was 47.67. 52-week low was 25.09. So, you can see that they did go down, down to $30 back in May 30, actually, back in nothing, but this year, May 31st, 2023, 30 bucks, guys, 30 bucks. And their lowest point this year was $25.09. Now, 
Okay, it is actually might serve itself as a pretty good buying opportunity. Let's actually take a look at this on the 10 year. Look at that on the 10 year. Look at that massive rise right after COVID. That's insane. That's absolutely crazy. Wow, just look at that parabolic rise. So, yeah, I mean, this company, I guess, does have potential to reach uh, decent highs. I guess around like 40 bucks or so. Anyways, let's come back into the calculator. We can see that they do pay out the dividend. It is not, guys, a dollar and 82. So if we come over here, we can see that it is a dollar forty. So let's actually change this. Sorry, I forgot to change that. So it's actually a dollar, dollar forty. There we go. All right, dollar forty. So come back over here. We can see that this is a yield of four point oh three. So this is already looking amazing, right? Four point oh three payout ratio of twenty eight point seven five. The five year character could be a little bit higher, but eh, you know it, it is what it is. It's almost seven percent. Zero consecutive years though. That's a little bit concerning. Coming here into the history, wow, that is, ooh, that is not looking good. Okay, I s think I see a pattern here. Do I see a pattern here? Interesting. So, interesting. So, January, here, here's the pattern, guys. Pretty much, they have, like, a pretty big dividend in January, right? You can see there, $1.20. Then, again, in January, $2.77. January, again, dollar six uh, sorry a, a dollar uh then january again 75 cents so they interesting so they they have a massive payout one time a year the beginning of the year and then they bring it down to around 25 cents and that's fine as long as they increase this one time value every single time it actually counts it as consecutive years now the problem with this is that this is not the case right this is not the case and you can see right there from two dollars and 77 down to a dollar down to 75 cents so not consistently increasing unfortunately which is kind of concerning now i don't necessarily know if that's like a policy of theirs it might be but right there there that right when it comes to dividend i'm already not looking at this i thought four percent was good but the fact that it's not consistent that right there is giving me a pretty big red flag in the form of a dividend x dividend date it's actually coming up. Wow, you guys have what? You guys have today to buy. You actually may put out this video early, just in case you guys may want to watch it and then make a decision. So, ex dividend date is actually coming up on the 13th of July, which is tomorrow. When you guys see this video, it'll be tomorrow. Payout date will be on the 28th of June of July. Sorry, and they pay their dividends quarterly. Coming back into the calculator, we can see that this dollar and forty translates to sixty-nine point three million dollars being paid on dividends every single year. And as of their five-year average free cash flow, after this is paid, they're left with one hundred and twenty million dollars on the dot. Not too bad. Last year's free cash flow is looking pretty good too, one hundred and forty-three million dollars. These pair ratios are really good, guys. Thirty-two point six nine and thirty-six point six one. They could afford this dividend. I don't know why they don't do it. I, I really don't know why they, they don't do it. Now, here's my question. Let's come back over here. This is the small one. Maybe I don't maybe they can't afford the big one. Maybe they just can't. But this is the small one as we can see right here. Now coming back into this, well, as I said guys, they can't afford it. Here's the thing though. What do these fundamentals actually look like? Because these free castles may just be a blip. So let's jump into these right now. And we're gonna start off with the net income. We got five years ago of 95.6 million to one year ago of 254.6 million, increase of 166%. Look at this graph, pretty consistently increasing from 5, 4, and 3 years ago, massive spike from 3 to 2, that's explainable because of COVID, and well, they had a tiny drop, and I'm being tiny, like hundreds of thousands of dollars, from 254.8 million to 254.6 million, 2 years ago to 1 year ago. I'm already seeing some problems with this, because we have seen companies that have these two massive outliers, and then they come down right afterwards. So. I'm gonna have to give this guys as a grade. I'm gonna have to give this guys, I would say 55%. 55%. If they do fall, they'll probably fall around like the 140 to $150 million mark. All right, coming now into the free cash flow. This one's looking pretty good, not gonna lie, not gonna lie. We can I see a little bit of that bringing it down from the massive outliers. We got five years ago of 98.7 million, two one year ago of $212 million, increase of 115% with an average of $189.3 million. Okay, so if we take a look at this, we can see that, well, from five to four, pretty consistently increasing, then four to three, massive spike, right? Massive spike, COVID, not really surprising though, right? Not really surprising, massive spike. And then another massive spike from three to two, 
but that was pr after COVID, so it was just like people are starting to go out now. So that kind of explains that as well. But then look at what happens one year ago. Instant crash, right? Instant crash. And I would actually argue it's more in line with that of uh, it's it's roughly between but it's roughly nothing it is between the four and the three year value of gold mark though it is a little bit more to the high side now for that i'm actually going to give this i would say around like a 60 percent looking now into the revenue this revenue is looking it's looking interesting because we got five years ago of 885.5 to one year ago of 1.345 billion dollars it is an increase of almost 52 percent on the five year now Looking at this, we can see that from five to three years ago, okay, even though three years ago is a tiny increase, is an increase nonetheless. But it is a pretty consistent increase from five, four, and three years ago. And, well, we can see that massive spike as of two years ago. Not really surprising. We saw the exact same thing with that of the free castle, right? And so far as of one year ago, they're continuing that same kind of trend. So I'm going to have to give this the exact same grade as the net income. I'm going to give this a 55% because, well, they may actually fall down to sub a billion dollars honestly they might they might right they might we have seen this before so i'm gonna have to give this once again a 55 percent looking now into the assets minus the liabilities positive all throughout a little blips here and there as you can see four years ago they dipped down but then they recovered as of three years ago then they had a massive drop two years ago but then they recovered and well you can see a consistent increase from two one and today so that's not looking too bad actually today it's even higher than the past five four and three years ago so yeah, it's actually not too bad of a of a assets minus liabilities. Average total assets it is 836.22 million. Average liabilities is 460.2 million. Doing the difference, we get 376.04 million. I'm gonna give this I'm gonna give this guys like an 80%. It's not looking too bad. It really, really isn't. It's not amazing, but it's not the worst. Looking now into the cash flow minus the liabilities. Okay, this is actually wow, huh? It's actually interesting. So we got over here that the worst year was four years ago. Not consistently decreasing, which is good. You can see that four and three and two years ago, pretty nicely increasing. Then it dipped down again as of one year ago. As of one year ago, it is lower than that of the average, negative 249.3. And the average, it is negative 208 point, uh, negative 209 million dollars. So I'm gonna have to give this, I'm gonna, have, I'm gonna give this guys like a 70%. It's all right. It really is all right. Looking now into this shares outstanding. Now this one, here's the thing with this one. It's difficult to analyze because it's very consistently increasing, like straight up. You guys can see it right there. Those charts hit that trend line every single time. And we went from 48.5 million. Here's the reason why I'm saying it's not too bad. Five years ago, 48.5 million. Look at this. To, to today, 49.5 million. In five years, they only raised 2.06% of shares. That's not too bad. And we can see here that in the previous year to the current year is 0.2. So this is pretty consistent. Right? This is very, very consistent. 2% isn't really that much of a problem. I actually consider it, I want to say healthy, but I consider it all right. I guess, uh, I I'm gonna give this guys an 80%. And lastly, when it comes into the cash and clearance, they currently hold $254.4 million with an average of $245 million. We can see here with the overall grades that the net income is a 55, free cash flow 60, revenue 55, assets minus liabilities 80, cash flow minus liabilities 70, shows a standing of 80, overall grade of 64. I'm looking at this and I'm just like, it's there, it's just, I don't know where it's going, right? I don't necessarily know where it's going, and that, to me, is actually making the difference here, right? It's making that 6% difference that I have no idea where this is going. For all we know, if the revenue and the net income comes actually pretty good, right, this year, this may actually be a pretty decent company, right? It'll actually be a very decent company. It'll probably be above 70%. Now, that's up to you guys to make, but here's the thing, though. What do we pay for that 64 percent i'm not saying it's bad it is good it's just i don't know where it's going so what price do we pay for this let's find out so here we have the discounted free cash flow straight off the bat not adjusting for debt we got 59 dollars and 60 and then adjusting for that 64 dollars and 30 cents now let's input the shares of standing because that's actually really easy to tell so for, and i'll get it right this time uh for the median assumption let's do negative two right because that's they've been 
pretty much on track with that the whole entire five years. For the lowest assumption, let's go up by one. Let's go up to negative three. And for the, or let's go down by one, sorry. And then for the highest assumption, let's go up by one to negative one. I think that's pretty fair. Honestly, I think that's pretty fair. Maybe instead of three and one, maybe you consider negative 2.5 and uh, 1.5. But I think that's still very, very fair. I like to keep my numbers, you know, flat even just so that way there's like no confusion right you kind of get together just with that now for the revenue here's the thing seeking alpha has is a 0.44 so i think we should follow that remember when i said i don't like inputting decimals eh, i kind of have to now so for the lowest assumption let's put in a quarter of a percent for the median let's go around half of a percent so let's go 0.5 and for the highest assumption, let's go up by 25 again. Let's go to a third, uh, sorry, sorry, three quarters of a percent. So that's 0.75. Perfect. Uh, oh, and that one rounds it up. I am so terribly sorry. Let's fix that right there. Okay, so with that, guys, we get the target share prices of $58.36 to $60.61. Not just for debt. Seek for debt $63 essentially to $65.27. Margin of safety of 510 dollars $53.49 to $62 on the dot. Okay, current share price of 35. The highest peak, I believe, was around like 40, 40, 45. So this is looking like an amazing buy right now. Here's the thing, though. I have no idea where this is going, right? My whole thing with this company is, are they going to sustain those massive ups that they had two and one year ago or three and two years ago? I don't know. So for that reason, I would, me personally, put on the watch list. I, I would put on the watch list and see what happens by the end of this year, right? By the end of this year, or even better, you could even do that yourselves. If you come over here to Seeking Alpha, you can take a look at the financials. I don't like to use it because we have no idea how this year is going to end. But if you come over here to Seeking Alpha financials, if you just take a look at the cash flow statement and you come all the way to the end, well, we can see their trailing 12 months. We can see how much they've done so far this year. You can see the net income is 242, which is a lot lower than, well, I wouldn't say a lot lower, but it's decently lower than that of January of 2023. So can they make it up? Possibly. I think they have a pretty good shot. If the economy goes south, though, oh, man, with people having to, you know, reinstate their student loan payments, I don't necessarily know. So yeah I, that's just one of those things i just do not know so please make these decisions for, for yourself guys this is why i give everything out for free none of this is financial advice again i give all this out for free because it's not financial advice you guys should 100 percent do your own due diligence when it comes to this i just took a company that somebody recommended uh and looked at it for about 10 minutes 20 minutes so so there you go like i'm not an expert on this company I don't know what they're innovating, what acquisitions they're making, any of that. I'm looking at the numbers. I'm just like, yeah, okay, it's looking okay. Look further into it. No, it's not. Skip next, right? So make that decision for yourself. If you do like this kind of content and you would like to help us out, the best way is just like, subscribe, comment. really does help here with the algorithm on YouTube. Thank you all so much for subscribing. We really, really do appreciate it, guys. Every single one of you. All right, every single one of you. Those who comment, those who like, those who lurk. Every single one of you. Thank you. Thank you so much, guys. We really, really do appreciate it. So let's take a look at this dividend. Even though it is not that sustainable and I do not recommend buying this company for its or solely for its dividend, putting in $5,725, this nets us $227.26. That's a big one. Here's the thing. They can't afford it, right? They can't afford it with that free cash flow. Problem that the history isn't that good. So it is what it is. Now, with that said, let's jump into the options chains. And I absolutely love how my camera turns dark. Looking at the July 21st, guys, we can see that there really isn't much of premium here when it comes to the puts. Actually, the calls is even worse, right? The, the puts are at least getting $55 for a strike of 35. On the call side, $5 for a call for a strike of 37.50. Not good. August 18th. Okay, the puts get a little bit better at $100, $110 on the on the bid side for the, for the puts the call side though is still not that amazing to me so nonetheless here's the options premiums for july 21st and august 18th 2023 all in all thank you so much for the recommendation so glad i got picked and we got one more one more we're gonna have to spin the wheel because that's just tra tradition here uh a tradition that i just started like a few months ago <laughs> but still tradition nonetheless um yeah uh, guys buckle i think is a company that 
has potential. Problem is, I have no idea where it's going. That's just that. I have no, I have no idea where it's going. It's not consistent. So it is what it is. So make that decision for yourselves. Have these calculators for free. Like, subscribe, comment really does help. With that said, you all can follow us on the new tech sites. Link is in the description below. Peace out, and we'll see you all next time. Thank you.